On today's show, we're talking comic book reviews, comicsology submit, and where to start with a new idea. Hey everybody, welcome to episode two of Ask Comics Tribe, the question and answer show about the craft and business of making and selling comics. Me and uh, my intern Charles here are excited about a big uh, Cowboys win today. So, uh, you know, we're going to take that enthusiasm right into answering your comics questions. Let's go. Do comic reviews matter? Should I even bother trying to get them for the book I just finished? All right, let's talk comic book reviews. Um, I think reviews are good for a number of reasons. Um, one, they can build awareness for your book, uh, getting your book book covered on, alongside the biggest name books in the industry from Marvel and DC and, and Image uh, is a good thing. It adds legitimacy to your series and gets the word out about it. Um, so that helps. Um, reaching out, the, the act of reaching out uh, proactively to the comics blogosphere and, and journalists uh, with your titles uh, can help you build your network. Um, I've sort of become good friends with some people that, that work in the comics journalism uh, industry and, and uh, that gets you opportunities to go on their podcasts and, and uh, promote your books um, that you might not have other, otherwise. Um, and again, so that just gets, gets more names, more Google hits for your titles. Um, and then there's also the, the opportunity to get some critical feedback from a, an objective outside observer, someone who's not your mom or your best friend or, or your friends in the industry, but someone that might potentially not have any stake in your emotional well-being. Uh, so that they're going to give it to you straight about what they think about your book. Um, so getting good critical feedback um, from time to time is, is good. Uh, what reviews aren't so good for is retailers don't really pay too much attention to uh, reviews. Um, it's more important that uh, your book is being talked about by a lot of sites and, and that name recognition registers, that might impact retailers, but they're not taking the time to read every detailed review of every comic blog out there and, and what some comic blogger thought uh, doesn't really impact their ordering uh, habits very much. Likewise, publishers aren't going to immediately scoop up your book because some guy uh, with a website said it was really good. Um, as a publisher myself, I know what I like. I'm going to judge a book on the book's merits and not what someone else thinks about it. Reviews aren't necessarily a, a gateway into getting your books published. Um, and then the third thing is, uh, book. sometimes reviews aren't very good at all for getting critical feedback. The quality of comics reviewers is just like the quality of comics out there very variable and there are some really good guys out there and there are some quote-unquote reviewers that all they do is basically give you a synopsis of what the book is. I'm sitting here at my desk with a comic book idea and no idea how to start. What do I do? So as a creator there's nothing more exciting than getting that uh, sexy new idea that you just uh, want to want to turn into something great. Um, the thing that I recommend doing as soon as you get one of those is you, you need to do a, an absolute brain dump. You got to get the, get the idea out of your head and into the world. Uh, there's that great Mad Men episode where one of the copywriters uh, has a great idea and loses it and never wrote it down. And he goes and sort of presents that to Don Draper. And uh, you think that he's going to get uh, fired or something for it, but Don just like... Yeah, been there. And I think I think we've all sort of been there. There's nothing worse than having figured out something, having had some genius touch you and uh, losing it to the ether. So um, the first thing you're going to want to do when you get a new idea is grab some time, grab your phone, grab a pen, anything that you can uh, get it out of your head and into the world and, in, and on paper in some sort of tangible form and just empty it out. Uh, everything that you have about the idea um, and, you know, sometimes... Uh, mind maps or brainstorming uh, clouds are good to use there, but you just want to drain it. And what you're going to find is after a, a short time or, or maybe a little bit longer time, depending on how complex the idea is, you're going to run and dry. And that's actually great. You've got the kernel of the idea out there. And as you, you look at it on paper, then you're going to be like, oh, wait a minute, there might not be so much here or or I, 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 there are parts of it you like but you're going to obviously need to do a lot more work to turn it into a story and, and turn it into a comic and, and all that so 
what you're going to want to do after you finish uh, the brain drain is then figure out, you know, what kind of story is this? And maybe start looking at examples of stories in this genre or stories that are uh, have the similar narrative spine uh, of the book or the story you're trying to tell um, and sort of see how they structure things. Uh, is Start thinking in, as early as you can in terms of beginning, middle, and end. Uh, how does it start? <laughs> <laughs> what happens, uh, what's the journey along the way, and how does it end? And um, I like to have that, that in, in mind, um, even in broad strokes, as early in the process as possible. But hey, again, nothing better than a great new idea. Good luck with it. I've submitted my comic to Comixology Submit, and I'm anxiously waiting for my sales numbers. What would be considered good? Comixology Submit is a platform that every independent creator should definitely be looking at. If you think about it, Comixology is probably the biggest comics retailer in terms of total uh, volume or units moved every week. They have the likely the largest inventory of comics uh, out there, and they're the most accessible comic shop. Uh, pretty much anybody that has one of these has a comic shop in their pocket, um, and Comixology is that comic shop. So the fact that they opened their doors uh, last year to creators uh, through the Comixology Submit program is, is a great thing. If you're unfamiliar with Comixology Submit, it's a platform where creators can upload PDFs of their comics and sell it through the Comixology store. Um, Comixology and the creators basically split the sales revenue, less costs, 50-50, and um, it's a definitely a, a, a nice added revenue stream to any creator's mix. Now that being said, nobody's quitting their day job based on Comixology sales right now. In terms of sales, most publishers, Comics Drive included, have seen Comixology sales come in about 10 to 15 to 20 percent of their direct market sales. Um, so if you take a, an image book, for example, that's selling around 10,000 copies, you can estimate that about 1,500 uh, units they're moving on Comixology. If the price for that is uh, $2 uh, per issue, then they might be making about $1,500 uh, in, in sales on that book. Now, if you're not selling books through the direct market and your uh, comics have a lot less visibility than uh, Image and other books, you're going to want to probably adjust those coming down. Um, but one of the great things about Comixology Submit and digital comics in general is that your book's never going to go out of print uh, on Comixology. It'll always be available. And so what I have seen is that every time you put out a new issue of a series, issue one sales will jump again. So for Comics Tribe, we've actually sold as many copies of the Red 10 number one through Comixology as we have through uh, the direct market. And because that book is out of print in the direct market, I believe eventually we're going to go way beyond what we did in print for that series. But for your first book on Comixology Submit, I would temper your expectations. Uh, a lot of the creators I talk to are moving between 50 and 500 copies on that platform uh, for their first issues. So what you're going to want to do is come out with the next issue uh, as soon as you can. All right, today's talkback question is, do you buy your comics in print, digital, or both? Tell me about your buying habits for comics in 2014 in the comments thread here. Uh, for me personally, I'm buying more and more stuff digitally uh, because <laughs> my wife hates the clutter. And uh, the biggest pro tip I can give you for this show is happy wife, happy life. All right, that's episode two. On behalf of intern Charles and myself, thanks for watching. He's off uh, burying a bone somewhere. But um, make sure you subscribe. It's either over here or over here. And send in those questions. Use hashtag AskComicsTribe on Twitter or send us an email at ask at comicstribe.com and we'd be happy to help you out. And if you will be at the New York Comic Con, come see me and the rest of the Comics Tribe. We'll have Joe Mulvey, John Lees, Ian Laurie, Alex Cormick, uh, Cesar Feliciano, and a whole host of other special guests at uh, Small Press. We'll have uh, the biggest section in Small Press. Uh, booths 1172 and 1271. So come out and see us. We're going to have a great time.